Get the power to do more with storable websites, more marketing, more engagement, more customers moving into your facility. Storable helps operators do more with the most powerful technology in self-storage. Learn more at storable.com slash do more. So quick introduction just for myself. My name is Matthew Beal and I'm a product marketing manager here at Storable. And today's session is um, a continuation of a multi-part series. And I'm gonna move pretty quickly through this slide compared to normal, just because I wanna give as much time as we can to our, our um, stars of the show, our operators here today. But uh, we've been covering four main topics over the last uh, six months or so now with this webinar series. One is this concept of shift to digital. And the idea is that we're seeing both tenants and operators move more and more towards digital forms of engagement than we've ever seen before. Two is the supply crunch, just meaning that we are seeing that um, the available inventory in the self-storage industry is not able to keep up with tenant demand. So we're seeing things like record high occupancies across the industry. And you would expect for operators to be able to start building new facilities, but for a variety of reasons, that's kind of been cost prohibitive for folks. Things like supply chain issues, uh, labor issues, the cost of steel, for example, are so high. And so it's interesting what we've seen is operators are kind of growing via M&A as opposed to um, doing new construction more so lately. So this continues to be a big trend. And the last one is this concept of market correction. So this is kind of overarching on all of this stuff, but you know we've seen uh, record headlines a couple of weeks ago that we have record high inflation, right? Um, a little bit over 8%. Uh, but we've also seen things like the supply chain issues and all kinds of different um, interest rate adjustments. So money's getting a little bit more expensive when it comes to lending. So Variety of things uh, kind of play into everything that we're tracking here across the self storage industry. And the purpose of the web this webinar series is to help you navigate all of these forces and kind of make sense of some of it and figure out what you can do to respond to these different forces. And so today's discussion is a continuation of our conversation on um, shift to digital. So last month we did had a conversation on how marketing websites can um, help you address that. Um, we're in Today, what I wanna walk you through is kind of some of that data that we've been going over that kind of shows you how some folks are moving over to this um, digital forms of engagement on the tenant side. And then we're gonna quickly shift into a conversation with a couple of operators who are gonna walk you through how they personally have been getting ahead of the curve and helping address this force in particular. So the do, two data sources I wanna share with you real quick. Well, this one is a demographic analysis that is done based off of data using the Sparefoot marketplace. So for those that are not familiar, uh, Sparefoot is the by far the leading source of um, tenants finding available units on the internet. It's, it's by far has the single most amount of traffic that goes through it. And so what we've done is we've segmented our number of interactions by age divisions down here on the X axis. And so there's a few things that are interesting to see, but the one I'm gonna point to you out in particular is that this orange bar in 2021, pretty much across the board, is higher than both 2019 and 2020, no matter what the age demographic is. So what this tells you is that, again, more and more folks are preferring digital forms of engagement than they have ever done before. And we also see that when we look at facility management software data. So what you're looking at here is aggregated data across our site link and our storage FMS in terms of lead sourcing. And you can notice the, the one thing I'm gonna point out to you here is the green section, walk-in traffic, has pretty consistently over the last couple of years continued to just diminish, diminish, diminish. So where it was you know, 55-ish percent, even up to 60% at times, it's pretty consistently closer to the 40% nowadays. And that traffic is being replaced mostly by these orange and teal bars at the bottom with website and spare foot. So these digital forms of um, shopping for tenants are where your customers are um, coming from. And so this is why we wanted to focus on a conversation on marketing websites to be able to see how can you use that to actually help address these, these kind of market forces and market trends. And so I wanna introduce our two panelists today. So we have Melissa Stiles from Storage Asset Management and Jeff Lay from Guardian Storage um, who have joined us. And both of these are operators that are both in the marketing space, very familiar with their marketing websites, but are also very forward thinking. And um, a lot of the things we're talking about, they've been tracking and being able to kind of develop their marketing website for years now based off of kind of predictability on this kind of stuff. So Melissa and Jeff, we appreciate you guys joining today. How are you guys doing? Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having us. Yeah, doing good. Thanks for having us. Good. Awesome. Well, guys, I want to jump right into the conversation just so we can make sure we have, you know, use as much of the time to hear from you guys. Um, 
one of the where I want to start the conversation is, you know, we just went over this data we just tracked where, you know, tenants are preferring more and more of these digital forms of engagement. What I'm curious is, you know, that's kind of aggregated data that we're seeing, but you guys are also seeing this on a very, you know, what a micro level comparatively in terms of your own operations. Is this kind of the same trends that you guys are seeing? And what are the specific things that you guys are tracking in addition to some of the stuff that I was just walking through? Uh, Melissa, we'll start with you. Yeah, so um, definitely echoing what you are showing on your graph. Um, our online rentals, you know, pre-COVID, probably under 10% of like full complete online rentals, not talking to a manager at all. Um, and then spiked up to about 40% and now coming a little bit back down, but still about, you know, 10 to 15% higher than pre-COVID levels. Um, so that want for that online is still there. Wow, yeah, 10, 15%, that's a lot. Jeff, what about you? Yeah, so we, to echo your slide, uh, five years ago, our lock-in needs were probably 18%, uh, and now that's gone down to 9%. And the way that impacts your business, uh, if you're tracking your close rate by lead source, Typically, those walk in can close at 90%. You can already in the store. Your salespeople are probably good enough to close them right away. Uh, if they now are going to a digital space, we know that close is much lower because they can see other sites. There's just that much more opportunity for them to do research. Consumers are smarter now. Um, that has a giant impact if you're taking a substantial chunk of your leads and having them close rate. So uh, you've got to have a site that works in your favor. Because some of those easier to close leads are going away. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, real quick, I'm sorry, Melissa and Jeff. I just want to make sure I've got a question that came in. Can you guys still see the slides as well on your side? Um, and then that same kind of goes out for anyone watching. If, if you guys cannot see the slides, would you mind letting me know via questions or chats and we can troubleshoot that accordingly? I, I can see your slide. It has our three pictures on it. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure, but we, we don't want people not seeing what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, perfect. Well, guys, I appreciate that. Um, Jeff, I know there's another thing that you and I were discussing a little bit before the call, which is this idea of um, like we hear a lot from operators that there's kind of a, a, a minimum standard for their website. It is a kind of a bare minimum that they need to be able to hit. Um, and a lot of folks feel like that is exactly what they need to do is kind of hit that bare minimum and then they can you know kind of move on and they feel like that's going to get them what they need to. Um, but you had some interesting kind of thinking into the you know, standard being more of a moving target. Would you meet, mind kind of elaborating how you're thinking about that? It's definitely a moving target. Uh, if you were to, to look at Uber or Lyft right now, and you went outside and you drive around and you leave them in 2016, uh, you probably wouldn't notice it, and you probably wouldn't even mind or care to get the car and get on the way. That to me is probably some kind of standard. The vehicles want to get you from point A to point B. Uh, but if you want to uh, pull up the, the website that I sent you, uh, I used Wayback, which is a, a website archive machine. You can see basically any company's site. Uh, this is what a Guardian storage location page looked like in 2016. Um, and you can see if you, if you scroll down, uh, there's just, it, back then it was functional. Uh, there's basically a reserve button, and, and that's what you get. Uh, and if you click over to the, uh, the long one tab, you'll see what we look like now. Um, to us, this is now the standard. You see there's just many different ways to reach us, phone number, chat. Um, you can rent or reserve, there's, there's coupons. We're giving people um, options. So I think that standard is, is the same. It's can a customer reach you and get to your business, but it's always moving because of just how fast technology is changing and how dynamic our consumerism can be. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then, and Melissa, I kind of want to throw a, a follow-up question related to what Jeff is talking about there, which is, you know, how do you think about that optimization process? So um, if, if you do truly believe it's moving target, which I, I know you do, uh, we've talked about this a lot, but it's like, how do you think about optimizing that website, changing it, finding new opportunities to be able to, um, you know, make sure you are meeting the tenant experience in the way that they'd like? Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, that's a great question. So one of the things is really um, thinking about the customer experience. Um, so I talk a lot about um, we mystery shopped our customers, or our managers, sorry, when we had them, you know, when we're in stores, and we still do, um, but how many people have actually mystery shopped their website and went through the rental process to make sure that it, it does make sense? You know, on the back end, we're creating it, and we understand how storage should work, but, you know, someone's never rented storage before, that process may seem clunky to them. 
Um, so definitely having you know an outside source looking at your website uh, and making sure that it does work how you believe it should work. And then we use products like Microsoft Clarity um, that on the back end work like there's also a product called Hot, Hot Jar as well um, that record kind of sessions on your website and you can start to see where maybe um, a button doesn't work how you think it's going to work or a customer is not navigating the page um, that you're going to that you think that they're going to uh, go to. Um, so we actually are optimizing all the time. Um, so we thought, especially during the pandemic, that the virtual tour was going to be super important. Um, but we started to realize that they were skipping over the virtual tour and going right to the unit tables um, or going to the reviews on the page. So we've been um, working on different ways to just like Jeff showed as well to lay out our unit page to make sure that we're getting what the customers are actually looking for above the fold of, of the website. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. And, and I will say there's a question that came in related, uh, and I think you answered a lot of it, how you think about this, but I want to throw it out. And then Jeff, I'll probably throw it to you to give your response as well, which is, you know, how, the, the question comes as follows, which is how many potential tenants that Select Reserve actually commit to renting online? And how do you kind of track the ones that are timing out as where they're falling off? And so I might even broaden the question just a little bit, just to say, how are you tracking, you know, the tenants experience when they are on the website? And you know, optimizing to get them to where you would need to be and kind of how you're tracking them through that funnel. And so, Melissa, you did a good job of, of talking about that. But, Jeff, how are you guys thinking about that at Guardian? If you have a multi-step process, you can see where in that process they fall off. Uh, and, of, of course, you want to get uh, – you want to capture the information very early on in case that fall off occurs. A lot of things can happen. Credit cards can decline. Uh, people can lose service. They can – something comes up. Um, so you want to have a limited number of fields. That gives you the information first, and then as they progress through the process, you can see where they fall off. And uh, you know, we do record it too. And if you're going to do it uh, to watch what customers are doing, you need two things: you need a service that will handle this for you, and you need a glass of scotch. Because watching customers on your site is like watching a mouse trying to get through a maze and find the cheese. It's so obvious to you, but they will not do it, and uh, it, will, it will tell you things about where in that process they're getting confused or where they're not clicking with what you have put forward to in front of them or put in front of them. That makes a lot of sense. Well, guys, yeah, I wanted yeah. to get, sorry, go ahead, Melissa. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna say just to add to what Jeff said too about capturing the information as soon as possible is we also have like a cart abandonment feature too that as soon as someone enters that information, it goes to the manager. And so if they drop off, we can follow up right away. And our managers have had a lot of success with that. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, a question came in for you just as a follow up to your response there, which is said, um, what kind of analytics are you using to track your customer funnel? Um, is there a specific tool that you'd recommend for folks to consider? Uh, Google Analytics will track it, uh, and then you can also, uh, we also have the abandonment feature, so some of that is just a, a data dump where you can see your abandonment percent, uh, and then where in the process that occurs, and you can see if there's any spikes. So a big goal is obviously to take some of those abandoned percentages and move them to the completed rentals, but Google Analytics will, will uh, show that funnel all the way through. Cool. Thank you. Um, so, guys, where I wanted to take the conversation next is um, you talked a lot about how you're looking at what your customers are doing and, and finding ways to optimize. So what are some of those things that you guys have prioritized, call it, over the last you know year, year and a half um, to improving your website, to actually meet the needs? And, and why have you made those investments in those, those particular things? Um, Melissa, I'll throw it to you first. Yeah, so we made we did a lot of testing of different pieces that we were maybe missing um, from like the human element of the stores. And so I think you have a slide um, showing that we've added merchandise, um, so the ability to to buy you know the the simple merchandise. Um, and there's also a lock option at the end as well. Um, so being able to buy that merchandise that you maybe were buying at the store. Um, so testing that out as well. And then we also are testing the ability to rent from a map. Um, so just like Jeff said, like the standard is not, you know, just a unit table anymore and they're going to it, but having these different functions. So I think you have the link to the map there and I can, can walk you through it then as well. I do. If I can uh, get out, here we go. Yeah. So, um, this isn't, it's, we're still like testing it and we've been, we've been going through it. it um, and it's not as intuitive as we thought, like my goal was always to try to run storage, like we pick concert tickets. Um, 
but I think it's a, it's a little bit more challenging than that. Um, but you can see like the blue is where we have vacant units. Um, and if you scroll over, you see the price and, and more about that unit then as well. Um, the reds are, yep, so you can see uh, the green, yeah. So you can see that's a parking unit for $99. You can reserve it right, right from the map as well. Um, so just making these like different tweaks and just trying to be innovative in how we are enhancing the customer experience. Um, you know, also on the technical SEO side, doing things like with page speed and ensuring that it's just um, up to that standard as well. Yeah, and I think, Melissa, you, you bring up page speed. I think just one thing that's maybe interesting for, for the crowd, maybe you guys can give me um, an idea of how you think about this, but um, Google is another just moving target, right? It's so such a critical part of your, your website experience and what they're looking for in terms of listing you high in SEO and um, all these kinds of things and also just providing good customer experience. That's also changing all the time too. So is that something that you guys are tracking and how do you go about doing that, staying on top of that and making those adjustments? Um, so, you know, really just following a lot of like the search engine land, Moz blogs, um, and, and just also following our own trends on our website as well um, to understand, you know, if we are with our search rankings, if we're all we're falling off, um, but just having a great, um, we have a great internal digital marketing team, and they're on top of that, attending webinars, reading those blogs, um, and talking to actual, you know, Google, our Google rep, and understanding what's going on. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that we are, are tracking. And even though you think you know what the next algorithm is going to be and you try to prepare for it, Google always changes it. Um, but we try to stay as prepared as possible, you know, making sure that our websites are optimized with, with the technical SEO, the content, and then the customer experience as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I know uh, the response I get to that a lot of the times, Melissa, um, just to kind of get ahead of, I suspect a question might be coming in is, you know, not not everybody necessarily has the the scope of a team that that someone like Melissa at Storage Asset Management would do, but there are a number of also just um, vendors and partners and stuff in the industry that can kind of help you navigate that stuff too. So I would recommend you do a bunch of research in that because there's a lot of really, really great website providers out there in the storage industry that can help you stay on top of that so that you don't have to do all that blogging all right, so the blog searching and staying on top of trends and that kind of stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. It's really good to have good part to get good partnerships with your vendors, um, and and to make sure that you're you're trusting them with that. Awesome, um, Jeff. I want to go back to the original question for you as well, which is just talking about kind of what some of the innovations you've made across your portfolio over the last year and a half or so. Yeah, so we I've noted five major changes that we've made, and I think we've uh, curated these from either watching customer interactions on the site or just some best practices that we get from following blogs and listening to Google and other things that we've seen over the years. But uh, the, these five things were we, we've added a chat feature, uh, we've integrated uh, the 360 tours, uh, we've added online mail, we've completely redesigned the user interface, uh, as you could have seen from the, the two slides that I had. And then we've added uh, an accessibility fun function to the site. Um, so all of those things really kind of facilitate the larger goal of providing multiple pathways and doors for, for customers to reach us in any way they choose. And I think uh, you know that those the scope of those projects can vary in size and cost, but at the end of the day, uh, if they can capture more leads for you and you have a high web conversion rate, uh, that will lead to some success. We've seen over the years, uh, many customers that have felt positive impact of having this on the site. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, guys, I want to transition to, I've got one other question um, I'd like to be able to ask you guys before we kind of open it up to more of a Q&A. So I will say if, for all the attendees out there, if you guys have any questions right now, is a good time to get them in because here in a moment, we'll probably have about five minutes to throw some questions towards them. Um, but the one other question I wanted to ask you guys is the reason in, in particular that Jeff and Melissa were invited today is that I know for a fact they're very forward thinking operators. They're, they are masters of the craft. They understand you know what are the big changes coming down the pipeline for all these marketing things and they're thinking ahead and they're comps constantly ahead of like what the, the normal industry is doing so my question for you guys is you know what are some of the things that you guys are starting to track now that you suspect are going to be kind of you know big or important in the self-storage industry as it relates to a marketing website over the next year or two years or three years what are those big things you guys are tackling and thinking about right now as a team um and then uh, jeff i'll throw it to you first so for, for, for tracking purposes, for me, number one is, is web traffic. And I think um, anybody in, in their meetings when they talk about KPIs, they always think the big funnel is leads. 
And a lot of times it is. And, and you hold your uh, your store teams, your sales teams to convert those leads. There's a percentage you want them to convert. But I have shifted our thinking a bit to the, the, the funnel really begins with web traffic. Uh, because once you understand what your web traffic is and what those numbers are, you can get your web conversion rate. Uh, and if you have a store that's getting 700 visits a month, and you can get your conversion rate to go up 3%, when I say conversion rate, I mean from traffic to lead, that's substantial. Uh, that, you know, that's 3% is probably somewhere around 20 additional leads a month. How much would you spend on Google AdWords to try to get 20 more leads uh, versus what can you do on your site to capture that? So when you understand web traffic, uh, you really put yourself in a position to, to maximize your site's conversion potential. From that, you can also look at your individual locations. If you have more than one location, uh, I'm assuming they're all the same template for your site. Uh, and if you notice deviations in web conversions, uh, that will tell you that there could be a pricing problem. Here. It's all the same. That's usually your own variable. So you have a pricing problem, or maybe you have a pricing opportunity. Maybe you're converting really high. And there's some opportunity to increase your conversion potential because customers are receiving that price well. So that's a big tracking mechanism for us is understanding the impact of the traffic on our location pages and, and how that's converted to leads. It's just the start of the funnel. Uh, and I think kind of the second part of your question as to where I see the future, um, I just like to react to what customers want, what I think that they're going to look for on the website. And then also, when I use other websites for personal use or business use, when I notice they're making changes, I ask myself why. Why are they making that change? Why have they integrated this? And it will put you on a path to understand, okay, that's because there's a growth trend toward this. And I think you can see that with online rentals, and you can see it in some of the accessibility options. Those are things that large scale companies were doing. Uh, and then if you can adopt those quickly, your customers will already be used to that because they're seeing it on Amazon and they're seeing it on uh, big box sites that they're using. And now they're becoming more comfortable using your site because it becomes just much more like what they're using every day. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Jeff, I think what's so interesting, and we're getting some questions related to one of the, the two topics you covered there, which is just this idea that ultimately it's like, if I'm understand, if I'm summarizing what you said there, it's like the two buckets are understanding what customer behavior is on your current website and identifying where you can improve. But there's also just forward looking, you're seeing what other folks are doing, not even in the storage industry necessarily, and in parallel industries and what kinds of trends and consumer behaviors are they trying to address. The first piece of like the understanding your tenant behavior, I know we talked a little bit about Google Analytics and kind of the hot jar and the clarity, but we've gotten three questions in the last two minutes about kind of, hey, what is the difference between these tools and how should I be using these? And so I want to spend a little bit more time just since even though we already started talking about those a moment ago, just understanding a little bit better. Like, uh, for example, the question came in, um, if I only had to, if I had to pick between one of those three, which one should I be prioritizing? Which one should I be doing you know, first and focused on? So do you guys kind of have an insight on like for someone who's maybe getting started on understanding their tenant behavior on their website? Where do you get started? What's the, the low hanging fruit, the most helpful um, piece of technology to potentially implement? I would say Google Analytics. Make sure you have Google Analytics. It's a free tool. You just put that code on. Um, then you get, you can start to see what pages you have the most traffic. You can start to see a funnel too and, and see the behavior flow as well. Um, so if you don't put like a hot jar recording tool on, you at least have that information from Google Analytics. You're just not seeing it like the the, the with your scotch, like Jeff mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Your, your, your foundation absolutely has to be Google Analytics. And then from there, you can start bringing in other add-ons and tools to help you further refine uh, what your customers want, what your conversions are. There you go. Google Analytics, unified answer. I like it. Um, okay, the other question that came in uh, that I thought was particularly interesting is um, around chatbots in general. So, Jeff, I think this one like fits very cleanly into your second bucket, um, your response just a moment ago, which is to say that uh, we're starting to see, I, I, I personally see a lot of chatbots that are popping up on various websites I use, right? A lot of the times the way that works out is you get a little square that pops up in your bottom right-hand corner if you've been on a site for too long or if you're just spending a little time so that it can say, hey, 
you know, I can answer any of your questions. That's what we're referring to there. So the questions are kind of coming in, like, are those typically humans powering those? Are they automated? And I think just to broaden the question is just, how are you guys thinking about chatbots in general? And is that something that you guys are um, exploring within your respective operations? And so Melissa, I'll throw it to you first. So right now we do use one that's human powered, but we are actually building one right now um, with our own technology that is an AI one. And so what we've done is we've used um, like reviews and we've used feedback that we get in Google messages or just um, in general, like what are the what are the first questions that a, a customer would ask um, and being able to build that intent on an AI bot. And then if it needs escalation, it'll go to go to a human, but we're definitely using like the AI chatbot technical uh technology first and then with ex, um, escalation later but i think the most important thing is really understanding again you know going back to understanding your tenants and what they want you know so using that feedback that you get like frequently asked questions um you know talking to your managers about maybe if someone calls you know what is the first questions they ask and being able to build that intent then in your ai bot so it truly is an, an ai experience awesome what about you jeff are you guys exploring it as well yeah, we currently, I, I would echo that, we currently have uh, an AI-driven bot, so it starts out as an AI, and then you can escalate to a human being. Um, and I think I'm still in the, in the phase of, I want to know what customers expect and want first, um, and then we'll adjust as needed from there. Um, and, and one thing you can very quickly learn as this thing, as the bot will have conversations with people, is the types of questions they're asking what can they not find on your site that they're compelled to start chatting with the bot? Uh, and then what can the bot not answer that now they're trying to escalate? I think those provide some very good insights into uh, what you're not communicating as the owner of the website um, and, and what customers really want to understand they can't find. Yeah, and that beautifully ties back to that topic of conversation we were uh, earlier where we're saying, how can you understand the tenant's behavior and then adapt your website to just help the next tenant not have that same question? So I think that that makes a lot of sense, Jeff, that connecting those two, appreciate it. Um, Melissa, I realized I, I didn't mean to, I, I kind of skipped over giving you an opportunity to talk about the future of, of kind of marketing websites in the storage industry. Um, what are some of the things that you're kind of tracking or things that you're expecting or starting to explore um, as it relates to websites? Yeah, so starting at like a high level, we look at search trends in general for storage and you know, are those keywords changing or are they, um, so during COVID and right after COVID in 2020, we experienced high volumes of search um, for self storage. And then we're starting to see that taper off a little bit. So then we can also adjust to make sure that our website traffic is actually following that same global pattern. Um, and it gives us a good benchmark for ourselves. Um, but then, you know, just like Jeff mentioned, the website traffic, looking at conversions, um, we look at the percentage of online rentals, we track that as well. Um, and then we just talked about it. A lot of what we do is also look at feed, feedback from the customers. Um, so understanding the reviews and where those reviews happen within the customer journey um, allows us to then tailor whatever part of it, whether it's the marketing website or an operations part. Um, so doing a lot right now, actually, with the feedback and the reviews, um, we're looking at really some some cool stuff as far as looking at a Google rating of one of our, store, our stores versus the cost per move-in and how that affects um, like the, their budget and, and, and what's going on you know, with the search trends in general. So um, really tracking those kind of pieces right now. Yeah, that, oh, that last piece is really creative. I haven't heard that before. I like that, that's interesting. Cool. Well guys, I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. We're right at 11.30 here, uh, 11.30 Central. So um, more than anything though, Melissa, Jeff, I just wanna take a moment and just say thank you guys so much for attending today. Um, we're getting tons and tons of positive comments, a lot of questions about some of the stuff that you guys have been discussing. So um, what, if you guys are open to it, I'd love to connect you guys and just get a couple of additional questions answered for some folks that had some stuff come in. But more than anything, thank you guys so much for attending today and, and taking the time to just kind of help walk folks think, uh, through how you guys are thinking about marketing websites. Thanks for having us, Matt, and definitely I'd love to, love to answer any questions. Yeah, thanks, thanks, and I'm, I'm available too. Very good. All right. Well, thanks, y'all. Well, real quick, just before I let everybody go, the one thing I did just want to um, let everybody know is, as I talked about before, this is a multi-part series. So this was our Marketing Websites Operator Roundtable. But on May 27th, we're going to be continuing the conversation. So we're going to be moving over to that fourth market force, which is this idea of market correction. So this is things like 
um, inflation and kind of the interest rate adjustments and what's that's what that's doing to our construction pipeline and the storage industry. It feels like a really good time just with all the shifting in the market to stop and kind of have a state of the industry as, as the way that we're looking at that is storable. I will also be sharing some kind of proprietary internal data to, to show you guys at scale how we're seeing that play out in the storage industry. So it should be a really, really cool conversation. I'm looking forward to putting together everything. Um, but that'll be on May 27th. So just uh, keep your keep an eye out on your email and we will be sending you guys some invites on how to register for that as well. But other than that, thank uh, everybody else for attending today. In addition to our panelists, we also appreciate everybody coming to just attend and participate in the conversation. Uh, a lot of great questions came in um, and we are looking forward to, you know, putting forward, uh, putting on the next one. So, but other than that, I hope you guys all have a great weekend and uh, appreciate you joining us. Take care. Get the power to do more with storable websites, more marketing, more engagement, more customers moving into your facility. Storable helps operators do more with the most powerful technology in self-storage. Learn more at storable.com slash do more.